with you through the French newspapers. Florence Villeminot has been checking them all out for us. Hello there. We're going to start off uh, with a French political scandal. We were already talking about this yesterday. It erupted at the weekend. Now, this involves the former French Prime Minister, François Fillon, the most senior advisor to the current president, François Hollande, and maybe a few other people we just don't know. That's right. Now, uh, yesterday there was a real feeling of shell shock uh, in the French papers. Today they're focusing on the repercussions of this major political scandal, yet another political scandal here in France. It's not pretty. Let's take a look at the front page of Le Monde. Uh, they talk about the fact that this scandal that's involving, as you said, François Fillon, so the former prime minister, and this man, Jean-Pierre Jouillet, so he's a, a, not only a close friend of uh, François Hollande, he's actually his chief of staff at the Élysée. You can see Le Monde here says that, well, it's weakening both the UMP, the opposition party, and the Élysée Palace. You can see a photo there of the two men. So Jean-Pierre Jouillet has admitted that he had lunch with uh, François Fillon back in June, and they nothing talked. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with lunch, <laughs> but they did. He has, had admitted that they that they talked about uh, judicial investigations that were targeting Nicolas Sarkozy. Uh, now he stopped short of saying that Fillon had asked him to accelerate uh, these investigations. That's what Le Monde, two journalists from Le Monde, has been saying. Fillon, meanwhile, is calling a Jouillet a liar. That's what he said on TV. You can see a photo of that interview there. And he's saying all this is a plot against him. OK, plots and conspiracies, nothing new in politics. But there are some voices calling for both of these men to step down from their jobs. That's right. And let's look at, look at the front page of Libération. It's talking about uh, this. They're talking about, uh, they talks about uh, the waltz of the deniers. Libé says there are so many questions still in the air. What were they really talking about during that lunch? Who instigated the meeting? And also, who is benefiting from this current fiasco? What's clear, Libération says, is all this is very damaging for the two men. In its editorial, it focuses on Jouillet. Now, it says that not only is the right calling for him to step down, he's not getting that much su support from the left uh, either. And uh, Libé actually doesn't have very flattering words for him in this editorial here. They say that, yes, he's competent and he's a warm man, but he's also a goofball who makes a lot of gaffes. Uh, and actually, you can see they, they talk about an alchemist here, but they say he's a backwards alchemist because he turns lead into, well, he turns, no, he turns gold into lead rather than lead into gold. This scandal was a golden opportunity for the Socialist Party, says uh, Libération. It was a golden opportunity for them to humiliate the right, and yet it's exploded in the Elysee Palace's face. As so often happens. Uh, this is also putting François Fillon in a bit of a complicated position. Of course, all this jockeying going on in the UMP party uh, ahead of the next presidential election in two years' time. That's right, and Fillon has made it very clear that he wants to run for president for the UMP party. Party in 2017. Let's take a look at the front page of Aujourd'hui en France. They wonder, can Fillon, will he be able to bounce back from this scandal? And Aujourd'hui en France doesn't paint a very flattering picture of Fillon. He had a golden opportunity to play a very powerful role after Sarkozy lost his re-election in 2012, and he has been making a lot of gaffes. But speaking about Sarkozy, it seems like he's getting away with all this without a scratch. That's what uh, Le Figaro is saying. He has finally uh, commented on this scandal. He did, he did that yesterday. Uh, he said he wasn't going to stoop so low as to get involved in all this, but he did say, we need to turn the page on these sickening soap operas where people try to take down a rival or a competitor by dirtying their name. I thought that was what politicians went into the job for myself, but there we go. They're obviously, I think they're enjoying it all a little bit, aren't they? Maybe not the people most involved. Um, we're going to move away from politics and scandal now. They do much more sombre affairs. A lot of papers focusing today on Armistice Day. It is the 11th of November. That's right. Uh, Le Monde focuses on the president, François Hollande. What is he going to be doing? Well, he is going to inaugurate a memorial in uh, Notre Dame de Lorette in uh, northern France. Uh, it's called the Ring of Memory. Uh, it's very impressive. You can see some enormous, photos here. Isn't it? It's Absolutely huge. huge. Uh, and you can see photos uh, on Le Monde's website. It was designed by the architect of Philippe Proust, and it's a giant ring-shaped memorial that's actually floating over one of the sites of, of, of some of the bloodiest conflicts during the First World War. And actually, a lot of papers are actually focusing on this ring. Uh, it's uh, unlike a lot of other uh, memorials for the First World War because it actually seeks to unite for former enemies uh, by paying tribute to fallen soldiers from every single country that was involved in the First World War. You can, you can read about it here in uh, Libération. So it has the names of some 580,000 soldiers who took part, who fought in uh, World War I. And Le Pignon actually calls it a post 
national uh, memorial and says it took years of hard work and research to pull these names together. Very unique indeed. Thanks very much for telling us about that. Flo Villamino back a little bit later on in Life in Paris with a look through the international papers as well. For now, we're going to take a look at what's making headlines.